Those gosh darn croaks from the toads woke me up on the tenth day of Miss Fall. Normally it sounds like a light squawk, one with a deep rumble. But on this morning, they are especially angry. That's when the earth began to rumble and that darn stone of mystery had just gone up and showed up in the center of town. I knew at that moment, it wasn't long for those blasted magic freaks to come snooping around our homes. I'm getting the hell out of here. Hello folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. Today we begin our Frostgrave campaign. You will have myself playing the wizard Akashara the Witch, and I have a guest on the channel today, my wonderful girlfriend Bailey, and she will be running her own warband with the wizard Namira the Illusionist. Before we get into the game, we will cover the wizards, their spells, the warband they have hired, the scenario, and any other pre-game shenanigans. So without further ado, let's dive in. My wizard Akashara will be accompanied by her apprentice pal named Cletus. What a nice man he is. Akashara will be focusing on the witch school of magic. Her spells will be sliding in as we speak. For Bailey, her wizard Namira will have the apprentice Brahm at her side. Namira will be focusing on the illusion school of magic. Always an interesting school and she plans on confusing the hell out of me this game. For Akashara, other than her apprentice, her warband consists of a crossbowman, a ranger, treasure hunter, three thugs, and a couple thieves. Range and mobility is Akashara's game plan. For Namira, a barbarian, an archer, two infantrymen, two thieves, and finally a pair of thugs to round out the list. I'm sure some heads will be getting knocked around this game. Moving on over to the scenario we are playing today. In the Frostgrave 2nd edition book, we are playing the Well of Dreams and Sorrows. But instead of a well, we have a glowing purple rock that is giving off magical powers. Five treasures will be placed on the board according to the setup of the scenario. A handful of arrows should be popping up on the screen now to give you a general understanding of where they are located on the table. For the special rules, we are changing them slightly by stating you can spend an action to touch the magical stone to gain experience and if a figure is pushed into the stone, they drop to zero hit points. The goal of this scenario is to touch the stone, get some extra experience, and snag as many treasures as you can while you attempt to escape off the board. Just before the game begins, we do have some before game spells. Namira the Illusionist will attempt to cast the Illusionary Soldier spell. This one goes off on a 12 for Namira, and she is successful. This ethereal soldier will be considered a thief for the battle. Over to Akashara, who has a couple pregame spells. For Animal Companion, Akashara will cast this on a die roll of a 10 and fails. Her Apprentice on a 12 and also fails. For Brew Potion, Akashara is successful on a 12, but does not get to make a potion. And Cletus is no good either, not getting a 14 or higher. All the spells are cast, and we are ready to begin the game with an initiative roll to see who sets up first. And Namira wins the roll. Billy and myself will set up our warbands on each side of the table, and we are ready to go boop the magical stone. Which warband will be able to gain the most fame and fortune? Let's find out right now. Turn 1 Wizard Phase. Namira will begin to activate herself and her nearby soldiers. Right off the bat, the barbarian will take a double move, heading up closer to the large rock nearby. He will stop here and await further orders. Namira herself will go next and move up to get in line of sight of the Barbarian and cast the Leap spell, hoping to sling her ally forward. This goes off on a 12, and with that 15, the Barbarian will fly forward and land next to the central treasure. The Thief will then take his first action to move and head towards the treasure. With his second action, he grabs the massive chest and begins the process of claiming gold crowns for the Illusionist. Now, when a treasure is picked up, a creature may awaken and appear on the board. And on a 10+, a creature does appear. After a few other dice rolls, it is determined that a white gorilla will arrive on the board right behind Namira and her followers. In this case, it will be represented as a hardy earth elemental. 
Finally, the thug will be cowardly and move the hell away from the scary earth elemental up and over some ruins to join up with Namira. This will end the wizard phase for Namira, and we move over to Akashara's wizard phase. To start things off, Akashara has line of sight of the Barbarian. She will attempt to cast the Curse spell. It is successful on an 8, and unfortunately fails it with a 2. She will decide not to empower the spell, but will take 1 point of damage for her excessive failure. After this, she will move up the board, making her way to the Magical Stone. Next, the Thief will go. She will move her 7 inches closer to the treasure and use her second action to pick it up. Once again, we roll to see if a creature appears on the board, and on a 2, nothing happens. After the Thief, the Crossbowman will move 6 inches forward, get in line of sight of the Barbarian, and fire at the enemy. The bolt flies forward, and the Barbarian is agile enough to dodge the shot. The final activation in the Wizard phase will be the Ranger, who will just simply double move into the open battlefield and cock an arrow for the next opportunity to attack. After the wizard phase, we move on to the apprentice phase, where Namira's warband will start things off with her apprentice Brahm. He will attempt to cast teleport on himself and reappear next to the magical stone. The spell casts on a 12 or higher, and on a 15, Brahm moves himself to the center of the battlefield. For his second action, he will place his hand on the stone and absorb some magical energy, gaining an additional 30 experience points. After this, the thief will trudge on forward getting right next to the big treasure. For his second action, he will pick it up and we will roll to see if a creature appears on the battlefield. On a 15, a monster shows up on the board and after a few determining rolls, we now have a snow troll appear behind the single tower. Again, for thematic reasons, we will call him a swamp troll. For fear of losing a treasure, both the thug and infantrymen will move up and run interference for the thief so that in a later round, he can get off the board with the treasure safely. After these two fighters move, we head over to Akashara's apprentice phase. The thief with one arm will activate first, move into base contact with the treasure token, and for his second action, grab the treasure. Upon pickup, we roll a die, and on a three, no creature will appear. Following this, Cletus himself will move six inches forward to the edge of this rough terrain and attempt to cast the telekinesis spell on the treasure the enemy barbarian has not picked up yet. With a critical success, Cletus lifts the treasure and moves it six inches towards him and his warband. To finish off the apprentice phase, both the thug and the treasure hunter will move up this ruined cobblestone road and head closer to the magical stone. After this movement, we begin the soldier phase with Namira's warband. The archer will start things off with a shot from her bow towards the invading earth elemental. It is plus two to shoot against a plus four fight, and the earth elemental evades the incoming arrow. After this, she will move forward and join up closer to Namira and end her turn. The infantryman will go next and use both of his activations to move closer to the earth elemental, and hopefully join the illusionary soldier in combat with the creature. Speaking of the illusionary soldier, this ethereal being will just simply take her turn to get next to the infantryman and offer her support. After this, we head over to Akashara's soldier phase. The remaining two thugs will simply just double move up and get closer to the action, hoping to knock some heads in and collect some treasure next activation. Before the round is over, we begin the creature phase, and we will start things off with the swamp troll. This monster has a visual on Namira's infantryman, and will trudge forward. Luckily for this soldier, this troll is slow and cannot get into combat range this round. After this, we move over to the Earth Elemental, who will move and then attack into the Illusionary Soldier, because this fighter has the lowest health. The Elemental has a plus 4 fight, while the Soldier has a plus 3 due to an ally being nearby. The dice are rolled, and the Illusionary Soldier is turned into dust, and is removed from the battle. After all the creatures have been activated, we move on over to turn 2. We will roll off to see who starts the turn, and Akashara's forces will go first in the wizard phase. The thief carrying the treasure will go first and begin heading off the board slowly. Her speed is halved here due to carrying quite the heavy load. Once her two actions are complete, 
Akashara will go next and attempt to cast Bones of the Earth on the enemy Barbarian. This goes off on a 12, and she is unsuccessful on a 4. Once again, she is such a bad wizard, she will take damage with her failure. She will then use her second action to move further up the board closer to the magic stone. Crossbowman will go next. For his action, he will load a bolt into his crossbow and fire a shot at the Barbarian. A 2 plus against a 4 plus, and the Barbarian ducks out of the way. One more movement for Akashara's wizard phase. This thug will use both of his actions to move forward. Some of his movement is in this rough wooded terrain, so he does not go as far as he would like, and things will turn over to Namira's warband. Namira herself will go first and attempt to cast Leap on the nearby archer. The spell goes off on a 12, and with a die roll of an 18, she is successful and the archer will be placed atop this unlit pyre and hopefully rain some arrows down in a future turn. After the successful spell, Namira will move up and closer to the magical stone. Following this, the thief with the treasure will take his little legs and start heading his way to the edge of the board and end his activation there. The final thug will go last and simply move up next to Namira and stop right there. The Apprentice phase will then begin for Akashara's Warband. Cletus will go first and be super cheeky again and cast Telekinesis on the treasure nearby. This is successful on a 14, but the Apprentice rolls a 9. He will decide to empower the spell, bringing the number up to 14, but taking 5 damage in the process. For his second action, he will stay put and have his allies go next. The Treasure Hunter will then go and run into this rough terrain and he is just able to make it to the treasure, and will pick it up. We will then roll to see if the creature appears on the board, and on an 11, we once again have a swamp troll appearing on the board. And unfortunately for Akashara, this monster shows up right next to the thief with the treasure. Uh-oh. Next, the other thief carrying the treasure with this one good hand will begin running and making his way to the board's edge to secure some gold crowns for Akashara. After this, the final activation goes to the thug carrying Santa's sack. He will double move and attempt to get as close as he can to the swamp troll that just entered the battlefield, with the goal of distracting the beast so that the red thief can make it off the board safely. After this, we move on to Namira's apprentice phase. Brahm will start the apprentice phase by attempting to cast Leap on Namira to get her to the magic stone. On a 16, the spell is successful and Namira is now within arm's reach of the magical power. His next action will be to start making his way off the board, and we will then move on over to Akashara's soldier phase. The ranger will go first, pull an arrow from his quiver, knock it into the bowstring, and fire at the barbarian. A 2 plus shoot attack against a plus 4 fight, and the barbarian once again dodges the attack. With that miss, he will just stay put. The thug, on the other hand, will take fate into his own hands and move into combat range of the Barbarian. He will pee his pants a little and attack in. We have a plus two fight against a plus four fight. And it took four tries, but the Barbarian is finally wounded, taking a whopping one point of damage. And with that small victory, we will turn things over to Namira's soldier phase. We will start things off with the treasure boy who will try to make his way downtown, walking fast, faces past, and he is edge of board bound. Do da da do da da do. Oh yeah, and just to speed things up, the other thug and infantrymen continue being escorts for their pal. Following this, we move over to the other infantryman who is engaged with the earth elemental. He will attack the monster. A plus three attack against the elementals plus four, and the monster takes a heavy blow with eight points of damage. The infantrymen will stay put, and we hop on over to the final activation where the Barbarian will enact some vengeance. A plus four attack into the thug's plus two, and the thug takes an axe to the chest and suffers six points of damage. This will then end the turns for both of the players at the table, and the creatures are next to go. This big green swamp boy will double move forward once again, chasing after Namira's forces, and unfortunately for him, he is too slow to gain any ground on them. We will then hop on over to the other swamp boy who is hungry for some thug. 
With a plus four attack versus a plus two attack, the Swamp Boy decimates the thug with a whopping 15 damage. Orchid never had a chance. And the final activation of the turn goes to the Earth Elemental who will attempt to take down the Infantryman. Again, a plus four to a plus three, the Earth Elemental slams some rocks down into the Infantryman, leaving him with one health. That was a close one. This will then end turn two. And we move on to some initiative. Both wizards will roll to see who goes first, and Akashara once again will start things off with the wizard phase. The thug will go first and move up to help his pal take out the Barbarian. He will attack in and will get a supporting bonus. With an even plus 4 to a plus 4, the thugs manage to knock some sense into the Barbarian and deal 8 damage making him reconsider his line of work. Akashar herself will go next, move right up to the Magical Stone, and give it a friendly touch. This will grant her 50 experience points, and then we move things over to Namira. The Illusionist will start off with an attempt to cast Teleport to get to the board's edge. It goes off on a 10, and she rolls a big 19 getting her out of this crazy mess. She pops up to the edge of the board and sees herself out. The Apprentice phase now begins, and the Treasure Hunter's movement is severely hindered with a double move, barely making it to the stone path. Following this, Cletus will attempt to cast Leap on the Treasure Hunter on a 12. He successfully casts Leap with a 19 and moves the Treasure Hunter another 5 inches closer to the board's edge. Cletus will then make his way towards the stone. We then move over to Namir's Apprentice phase where the Thug and Archer will begin heading out of the battle as they see little reason to stick around. They will both make double moves over to the board's edge. After this, Brahm will attempt the teleport spell to try and get out of here. This spell casts on a 12, and once again we roll a 19, and Brahm shimmies his way off the board. We then move over to the soldier phase for Akashara. She will start off with the Bash Brothers, and the Purple Thug will attack the Raging Barbarian. Once again, we have a plus 4 attack against a plus 4, and we get a tie. This means both fighters are successful, and they each take enough damage to take the other fighter out. To finish off the soldier phase, the remaining four fighters will either head off the board or move far enough away to avoid any monster's wrath. Akashara also manages to claim two treasures. We will see what goodies she finds at the end of the game. We now move on to Namira's soldier phase where the infantryman will attempt to end his battle with the earth elemental. It is the infantryman's plus three fight, the elemental's plus four. And with a swing of his axe, the infantryman reduces the earth elemental to rubble, allowing him to move off the board in one piece. Rather than continuing Narmir's soldier phase, Bailey and I discuss that the game is essentially over now, that there are no obstacles preventing everyone from getting off the board. Cletus will be able to touch the stone, and Akashara's warband is able to collect a third treasure while Namira and her crew will be able to escape with two more treasures and their lives. Those poor trolls are going home hungry. After this battle, both warbands are able to leave relatively unscathed. With the battle complete, we now move on to the after-game activities. We'll start off with Akashara the Witch. Since it is game one for her, she will choose a base of operations, and that location will be the laboratory. This home base will give her more experience at the end of each game. For her soldiers, two thugs bit the dust. Now normally you'd roll for fighters to see if they live to carry on into the next game, but thugs are free to purchase, so no roll is necessary. In this battle, Akashara managed to gain a total of 260 experience during the course of the game. She will spend 200 of those points to gain another point in health and make Brew Potion easier to cast, raising her up to level 2. Akashara's warband also managed to capture three treasures. The first treasure she found contained a hundred gold crowns and a grimoire of Reveal Secret. The second treasure contained forty gold crowns and two potions, both of them being an elixir of speed. And for her final treasure, she obtained forty gold crowns and two scrolls. One scroll of Illusionary Soldier, and the other Embed Enchantment. Akashara then decides to sell the Embed Enchantment Scroll and not spend any gold crowns on any new soldiers, items, or upgrades. She is saving up for something special. 
Now over to Namira the Illusionist. Since it is game one, she will choose the brewery for her base of operations. From here on out, she will gain 20 gold crowns at the end of each game, and plus one will saves for all of her soldiers at the start of each game. For her soldiers, the Barbarian fell to zero hit points. She will roll to see if the Barbarian survives, and luckily he lives another day. In this battle, Namira managed to gain a total of 255 experience points during the course of the game. She will spend 200 of those points to gain another point in health, and make teleport easier to cast, raising her up to level 2. Namira's warband also managed to capture two treasures. The first treasure she found contained 40 gold crowns and a magic weapon, a bow of plus 1 damage, who she will be giving to her archer. In the other treasure, she obtained 80 more gold crowns and a grimoire of imp. Namira will decide to purchase the home base upgrade carrier pigeons to make future soldier purchases cost 10 gold crowns less, and save the rest of her money up for future purchases. There you have it folks, the first Frostgrave battle report on the channel. This was definitely a learning experience for me and Bailey, and it is always exciting to try out a new and exhilarating game. If you enjoy this content, let me know by doing the socials, liking, commenting, and so on. Make sure to check out the Patreon and Discord for other fun stuff as well. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.